this one I wrote um, after a conversation about the recent uh, mission to the moon, uh, where you may where you may be familiar with the moon. Uh, the the uh, rover landed upside down. So uh, this is uh, this is called upside down moon landing. It goes like this. Did you hear about the rover that face planted on the moon? It was unexpected, slightly inopportune. But it made a pinpoint landing, went exactly where it wanted to go. Just with a bit of flair, guess it wanted to put on a show. An upside down moon landing, no one expected that. And it completed the mission, kind of like a robot acrobat. If it could only catch some rays, then it could wake up and start a brand new phase. It could transform to explore for the rest of its days. Reports said that rover landed on its nose. Yeah, sometimes you fall down, that's just how it goes. But it carried on and sent all the data home. Before it shut itself down, said sayonara, peace out, shalom. An upside down moon landing, no one expected that. And it completed the mission, kind of like a robot acrobat. If it could only catch some rays, then it could wake up and start a brand new phase. It could transform to explore for the rest of its days. Well, its baseball robot friend snapped a photo. Who could imagine having such a pal? Though the pitch show the landing wasn't quite apropos. The rover seemed to say, so what? Yes, I can. An upside down moon landing, no one expected that. And it completed the mission, kind of like a robot acrobat. If it could only catch some rays, then it could wake up and start a brand new phase. It could transform to explore for the rest of its days. So now you know about the rover that landed upside down. It touched down softly when it landed on the ground. And it was a pinpoint landing, flew all the way from Japan. Showed you can win even if it doesn't go according to plan. A win's a win, sometimes it doesn't go according to plan. Celebrate all the wins. For you. This one is one that some of you might be working on this problem. This is a problem um, of trash in outer space. And uh, this song is called Space Junk. Um, is anybody working on that problem here? Some of you, yeah, right? Okay, so. And this is also from this upcoming album. Space Junk. Space Trash. Are we going to clean up that stash? All that litter, but no ground. Down. Discoveries were made, but the space junk stayed. Satellites sent their data back, but with every launch we got off track. Until there were collisions with the trash from those expeditions. I guess they missed the lesson of cleaning up their mess in outer space. When they launched all those missions back in the day, and I wonder, what would their parents say? Space junk, space trash. How can we clean up that cache of broken bits and satellites? Floating up there day and night. Discoveries were made, but the space junk stayed. Now some clever scientists 
are trying to fix what the others miss, burning it up in our atmosphere, so it won't stay in orbit for thousands of years. I guess they missed the lesson of cleaning up their mess in outer space when they launched all those missions back in the day. And I wonder, what would their parents say? We could clean it up in a flash. Old paint chips from rocket ships. Harpoons and lasers might do the trick. Discoveries were made, but the space junk stayed. We'll find the solution for interstellar pollution. We need to deal with the debris until Earth's orbit is garbage free. Guess they When we launch those next missions will be okay When we launch those next missions will be okay One more song. Um, so my band is called Marsha and the Positrons, and you can find us online, MarshaandThePositrons.com, and I have a few um, QR codes if you want to find us in different places on Instagram and YouTube and all those other places. And um, this last song is a song about our band name. So you probably already know that positrons are a kind of subatomic particle found in black holes in outer space. And for a long time, they were just theoretical, right? Um, but recently, some, some scientists were able to prove their existence in a lab very briefly. And so we know that positrons exist and they're a kind of antimatter. So if your hands are free, um, there's a little tiny clap along part <laughs> for this song. So I'm going to sing the words antimatter exists and then there's two fast claps. So like this. <laughs> antimatter exists. So if your hands are free and you want to try it, let's practice once. Antimatter exists. Nice. Okay, so that was it. So this is called positrons. Yeah, Electrons get to run in atoms, nucleus made of protons and neutrons. Sometimes two atoms share electrons. They form covalent bonds. Groups of atoms make up compounds we encounter every day. Positrons are a different story. They come from black holes far away. Oh, oh, oh.
for everyone. So if you would like to um, to find us online, you can grab a sticker. I have some over here and over here and on the table, and uh, and you can find us in all the places. So thank you so much.